In this Excel spreadsheet, we have a data set that contains family ownership of minivans. So in the first column, we have minivan ownership, whether a no or yes. And uh, then we know the family size being small or large, and uh, salary being high or low. So each row represents a family, and in this data, we have 343 families and these three variables. And we want to figure out whether the minivan ownership has anything to do with either family size or the salary or the income of the household or both. So we're going to use a pivot table to help us do that. And essentially we're using Excel's pivot table function to create a contingency table that you have learned in your stack course. So let's do insert, pivot table, and click OK. So now we have a new pivot table. Let's rename this pivot. So for this pivot table, we want to look at the minivan ownership, yes or no. So that will be our columns, yes or no. And then we look at how family size and salary influences that. So we pull family size and the salary as rows. So now you can see they have been stacked together. And uh, the values we want to look at is the number of families uh, that own the minivan or not. So now we have the count of these numbers. This is a little bit hard to see. Let me close this down. So First, we have family size only on yes or no. And what we want to show here is the values. So as you look at the tables, uh, the grand total of each row is 186 and 157, and the columns are 195 and 148. So when we compare the numbers here of 48 versus 47, they're not directly comparable because the grand total of each row is different. So I'm going to change this from the counts to percentages. To do that, click on the count of minivan, and then left click on value field settings. And uh, we want to change show value as. So instead of no calculation, we're going to change this to percentages. And we're going to change this to the percentage of row total. Click OK. As you see now, the percentage of each row is 100% because uh, these numbers represent the percentage of the row total. These two numbers would add up to 100%, and these two numbers would add up to 100%. Now let's first take a look at salary. I'm going to drag salary above family size and uh, collapse this. So in terms of the salary, and uh, let's compare this. And for the families that don't own a minivan, the percentages of high or low salary are 58, are 56.1 and 58.8. And the families that own a minivan, the percentages are 40 some. There's a little bit of a difference, but these percentages are similar and these percentages are similar. So at least based on this evidence, it does not look like salary has a big influence on whether a family owns a minivan or not. So now let's look at family size. I'm going to drag family size row above salary, so the family size. Now we're going to prioritize family size. And uh, the comparison we look at here is, and we can instantly see that over 90%, the majority of small families don't own a minivan, but the majority of large families own a minivan. So the conclusion is minivan ownership is associated with large families, but not so much with uh, with the salary or income of these families. That concludes this video.